coming. And it's coming at a breakneck speed. And we need to get ready. I want to try something very quickly. Could you put your hand up if you have used or heard of ChatGPT? I think we have every single person in the audience with their hands up. OK, keep your hands up. Could you keep your hands up if you had heard of GPT one year ago, this time last year? I think one person's hand, or two people's hands remain up. What we've just demonstrated is the rapid pace that AI is moving through our societies. And this is just the beginning of this new era. However, we're not ready for this new era yet. And one of the key areas that I'm concerned about is the availability of hardware and computing that we need to run this kind of AI. So just like all of you have heard of ChatGPT only in the last couple months, over the next 10 years, we're going to see an increasing amount of AI in all of our societies, and we need to get ready. So first, I think it's maybe useful to talk about what artificial intelligence actually is. So for my examples, I'll be mainly talking about artificial intelligence that uses language, so the kinds of things that you would have used in ChatGPT. And believe it or not, all AI is, is maths. It's just additions and multiplications like you're used to and like you study in maths class. That's all it is. It's really, really big maths problems, but at the end of the day, it's just maths that predicts the next word. Now, if you're doing a maths problem, how do you do the problem? Well, you probably have a calculator. You need the exact same thing when you're doing AI. In order to be able to run AI, you need a really, really, really fancy calculator, what we call GPUs. You can also run it on other kinds of hardware, but this is what I'm going to be referring to when I talk about AI hardware. And you probably have seen GPUs before. If any of you have a gaming PC uh, or a PS4, you probably have one of these inside that. But this is like that, but on steroids. Now, the problem that we have in AI is that there is way more demand to run AI on this kind of hardware than there is supply. And that's a fundamental issue that will go forward. So this is a good old-fashioned problem of supply and demand. So let's start with the demand. Why do we need more of this AI hardware? Why is it such an issue? Well, there's two main reasons. The first one is that the models are getting much, much bigger. And when I say they're getting bigger, they're also getting smarter. And when they're getting smarter, they're getting more complex, and you need more and more complex and smart calculators to be able to work with them. And we can demonstrate this really, really easily by looking at the growth of the state-of-the-art models over the last couple years. So in 2018, GPT was OpenAI's first model. Um, it was about 100 million parameters. A year later, we had GPT-2 at 1.5 billion parameters, so a 15x increase. And only a year after that, we had GPT-3 at 175 billion parameters. The models are getting more and more complex. And this is what's driving the great results that you, you see in ChatGPT. But it also means that we need more and more powerful hardware to be able to run this kind of stuff. Now, I don't think the, this trend will continue. I don't think they'll get much bigger than where they are now. But where they are now is incredibly compute intensive. To be able to run ChatGPT for a year, just in terms of the hardware, you need to spend about a million pounds in hardware and electricity. The second issue in, on the demand side is that more and more people want to be using AI. So right now, if I go into an ordinary business, there's hardly any AI that's used. So when I graduated, uh, when I graduated Habs in university, hardly any businesses were using AI. But this is going to be radically different when you guys graduate. So let's think about a couple instances uh, where AI, AI might be used in businesses. OK, let's think about one, emails. Every time you write an email, currently you have to actually write the email, right? God, that's so 2022. 
in 10 years' time, you won't have to write the email. It'll be auto-generated with chat GPT type things, and you'll just have to proofread it and then click send. Every time you send that email, it'll go through the network and it'll be checked for compliance and maybe any bad words that you might have used. Every time you get an inbound email, you'll have this kind of AI running a spam filter, for example. Let's think about another instance where AI is going to be used in these businesses. Um, in hiring, for example. Currently, you know, you send your CV and then you speak to a person and then you, you either do an interview and you get a job or you don't get a job. Well, in 10 years' time, you'll send your CV. It'll be screened by an AI. You'll probably have your first conversation with an AI. You might think it's a real person, but it might be an AI. And then all of that, all of those processes will be powered by the AI. Let's think about one more. Meetings. Right now, you go to a meeting, you might have to take notes. Well, not in the future. In, the, in 10 years' time, you won't have to take any notes at all. You'll have an AI listening that'll write all your notes, find all your action items, and then put it immediately into your, into your calendar. And all of this is AI. And this is AI that requires hardware. And this is an exponential growth of this kind of demand. So the demand for this kind of hardware is growing exponentially. Let's think about the supply now. So I don't know if any of you have heard of Moore's Law, but essentially, over the last 50 years, this electronic revolution has been powered by something called Moore's Law, which is the idea that every two years, your computers, your microchips, get twice as powerful. Essentially, you can fit twice as many transistors on the same um, microchip. However, we're really pushing the bounds of physics of what's possible to do right now. So we're not going to be able to rely on microchips getting more and more powerful into the future. So previously, we might have seen a doubling of power every two years. It's looking like it might be every four, six, even eight years. So when we compare the growth rate of the hardware that we're able to produce with the growth rate of AI, you can see that there's a bit of a supply and demand issue. Now, this will lead to bad effects. This will be bad for society, or it might be. It'll probably mean that AI will become much more expensive. It'll become more exclusive. Um, and it might mean that ordinary researchers who want access to these kind of hardwares aren't able to get it anymore. We're already starting to see that. However, Necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. Unfortunately, there are some really innovative things that we can do to try and mitigate this issue. So let's look at some of the solutions. There are some great startups working on building better ways to utilize our hardware so we can get the most out of the hardware that we currently have and make sure that we can fit as much AI in it as possible. Companies are building the next generation of AI hardware. So companies like Google, Intel, NVIDIA are working really, really hard to break through the physical barriers that, more, uh, uh, that come with the end of Moore's Law. Manufacturers are increasing manufacturing and investing a huge amount of money into building these chips that we need to power the AI revolution. And companies like my own are building smaller, more resource efficient AI so we can do the most with what we have um, available. So the AI revolution is coming. It's going to be a huge turning point in our society. And every single one of you that put your hands up are going to be the first generations that experience this AI-powered workplace. We're currently not ready for it. This hardware is a huge limitation. But fortunately, smart startups, entrepreneurs, and researchers are working to fix this issue. The AI era is coming and we are going to get ready.